Good morning. How are you today? Let's give everybody a chance to join us so we can all get on the same page. Stayed up <clears throat> way too late last night watching the World Series, hence the bags under my eyes, and um, I went to bed before it was over. I was so tired. I couldn't stay up another minute, and I missed the big finish, and then I saw on the news this morning, they were calling it the most epic World Series game ever, and of course... I missed it, but I went back and watched the final highlights, so it was a pretty exciting game. It's not my Texas Rangers, but it's still a Texas team, so I'm cheering for them. Oh, let's wait about 30 more seconds. That gives me a chance to get two more <laughs> sips of coffee into my body. Can't tell if I have lipstick on my... Maybe I don't. Good morning, Deb. How are you? Okay, I need to announce first, I promised Ellen that I would tell her, good morning, Nancy and Robbie and everybody that's coming in. Um, the Elfster holiday card recipe exchange has closed. Um, we um, announced it probably a dozen times or more and um, it officially closed, I think at midnight last night and Elfster, the company that we used this time has swapped the names and so check your email if you registered to participate in that with us. You should have an email already from Elf Street. You might need to check your spam folder if you don't see it. Um, you'll click on a button that says get my swap I think and it'll give you the name and address of the person that was chosen for you and then we ask you to get a card, a holiday card of some kind, write a note of encouragement to your buddy and enclose a, a recipe, um, preferably one that you have tried and really enjoy and put it on an index card, a recipe card, so that if they are doing the index card um, um plan that we talked about in an earlier video, then they can just include that in with their box and it'll be good to go. Uh, just be sure, be sure you get yours out. If you signed up, please don't leave your buddy hanging without sending them a card and a recipe. And um, then uh, depending on how participation goes, we will do another one um, shortly. Um, Anne says she has a sick five-year-old grandson, so she'll watch as she walks on the treadmill tomorrow. Uh, Anne, those babies come first. I totally understand. Okay. My product for the day. Oh, excuse me. Several of us, from time to time, suffer from not being very regular or feeling like you need a little help along the way in the um, digestive uh, tract. And um, I have a product that I have used for probably close to 20 years. Um, several of you know I've had colon surgery and so um, I seriously have issues at times. Um, I take a probiotic, but you know, sometimes even that doesn't work. Um, you know, these are things that nobody likes to talk about. I have found that the over-the-counter products are just way too harsh and they give me a stomach ache and they make me feel bad. And so um, the lady at my health food store introduced me to this product about, like I said, about 20 years ago, and I haven't been without it since. Um, I don't encourage you to take it on a daily basis because I don't think, um, you know, anything like that should be um, overused. But if you find that, you know, maybe once or twice a week, you just need help in that area, 
This is the product that I use. It's by Nature's Sunshine, and you may be able to get it at your local health food store. If not, you can order it from Amazon, which is what we do. We just love Amazon because, you know, you just, we have prime shipping, so we don't pay shipping, and it just, you know, ends up on our door. Um, this is this is the product, Nature Sunshine LBS2. The LBS stands for Lower Bowel Stimulant. Okay, again, not something that anybody likes to talk about, but uh, the suggested serving is four capsules. I don't recommend you take four capsules. I take one or two at the most, and I take it, you know, a couple of times a week or as needed. Um, I think it's like $12 on Amazon for 100 capsules, so it should last you quite a while, but um, it's all natural. It has no chemicals in it. It's just made from... Um, let's see, I can't even read that print, but it's different kinds of bark and um, flowers and stuff like that. So anyway, that's my product. Um, I wanna remind you that today is 25 days until Thanksgiving. So if you're following and participating in our Turkey Day countdown, you have 25 days to dig deep and get to your goal that you set for yourself. Um, I, you know, sat at my dressing table this morning and had a talk with myself about, okay, by this time next week, I need to be at this point, and by this time the next week, I need to be at that point, and then by this time the next week, I have really got to buckle down and dig deep if I'm going to see my goal um, Thanksgiving morning. So, I hope you're doing the same. I hope you've enjoyed the challenge, and yes, as, uh, Thanksgiving Day, we will enjoy the day. No challenges for that day, but the next morning we will start our countdown to Christmas Day. And um, so I hope you participate. I think it has helped me, and I hope it's helped you. It's kind of just kept me grounded and focused on um, looking ahead. And um, it's made me think twice about some things that I've reached for. I, you know, I thought, oh, that's no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to do it. And so, um, you know, if you're a competitive person like I am, then those challenges just help keep me kind of grounded. It makes me accountable to you even when I'm not online with you because I know that I'm going to have to come back and um, live up to my promise to be honest with you and tell you how I did. Speaking of that, my vacation weight is all gone and um, I was down... Um, uh, I was down about a half a pound under vacation as yesterday morning and then Sundays get me. I don't drink enough water. I don't, um, Sunday's the day I relax a little bit and um, so I usually end up with um, a slight gain on Monday but I'm gonna guzzle the water and it will be back down tomorrow morning and then uh, I'll buckle down to, to get uh, down a little bit more before next, before we talk next Monday. I need more coffee, clearly. Mm. Barbara says she's had great success with magnesium. Magnesium is, is a supplement that um, I think a lot of people include in their daily vitamin thing. And I think there's magnesium in these too. I just, my, my contacts are not focusing in, so I can't read the ingredients for you. I'm sorry, but you can look it up on Amazon. Um, but, you know, I, th I think anything that we can take that's natural that will help us along the way. Um, I would always reach for the natural first, but um, I probably should have said this at the beginning. I'm not a doctor, I'm not a nurse, I'm not even in the medical profession. Um, I'm just a woman just like you, trying to make it through the day. And um, so I'm just sharing with you something that's worked for me. And if you have found something that works for you, then please feel free to share it with us. Um, you know, that's one of those things that we don't like to talk about, but it affects all of us. So there we go. Um, yesterday, I put on the board asking for your suggestions on things that you would like for us to talk about, and boy, did you respond, and I appreciate that so much because I don't want this to just be me rambling. I want it to be something that we can all learn from. I learned by digging to come up with information to share with you, and hopefully you learn from, from something that that I may have found that I can share with you. Um so we're going to talk about two or three things today, and I'm going to try to make it as quick as I can, but, but here we go. Halloween, tomorrow. I don't have small children at home anymore, 
so Halloween isn't a big, huge, you know, holiday for me like it used to be. We don't, you know, go out trick-or-treating, and so we don't have the candy hanging around here by the bucket loads for days afterwards, and I can't tell you what to do with that candy if you have children or, you know, if you have grandchildren living in your home. Only you can do that. You have to decide what your priorities are and what's important to you, but here are my tricks for surviving Halloween. One is I don't buy the candy until tomorrow. I'm not going to have bags of candy hanging around my house just tempting me to eat it. Um, it's not any more expensive to buy it tomorrow, and it takes me five minutes to run in the store and pick it up on my way home Halloween night. So, um, uh, Judy asked me to say the name of the LBS. It's Nature's Sunshine LBS Roman numeral 2. I think it's $12 on Amazon. Okay, back to Halloween. Buy it at the last minute. That way you don't have to deal with it until uh, tomorrow night. The other thing I do is I buy candy I don't like. If Reese's Pieces are your nemesis, don't buy Reese's and have it in your house. If the little snack size candy bars torment you, then don't buy the little snack size candy bars. There's not a Halloween police that's going to come to your house and cite you if you didn't buy the, you know, the best candy. Those kids aren't even going to remember by the time they get down the street which house they got what candy at. They're just excited to be getting out getting candy. You don't get brownie points for giving the good candy. So, buy candy that doesn't tempt you. Um, I don't like suckers. I've never liked suckers. They don't tempt me in the least. So that's pretty much what I buy is the, the big giant bags of suckers. So find something that, that you know, doesn't tempt you. Um, the other thing is remember, it's not your candy. You didn't buy it for you. Every bite of candy that you take out of that bag is a piece of candy a child isn't going to get. Now that sounds harsh. But if that's what you have to tell yourself, and if that helps, then do that. Um, I don't put it out in a bowl until, you know, I'm ready to turn the porch light on. I keep it, um, if you have to, leave it in the car when you get home tomorrow until it's time to pass it out. But stop putting temptation within your reach and right in front of your face to torment you. Um, that's only hurting you. The other thing is um, I would... After the porch light goes off, if there's any candy left, I would get it out of my house. I wouldn't have it around. I would donate it. I would take it to the office the next day. Or generally what I do is when I'm ready to be done Halloween night, the very next group of kids that come to my house, they get it all. They just hit the jackpot. I give them every bite of candy, and then I turn the porch light off, and then that holiday is over. Um, uh, that's just what I do. But I'm not going to have temptation around to make me miserable. I'm just, that's just setting myself up for failure, and I'm not going to do it. So now if you have children at home and you say, well, you know, my kids went trick-or-treating, and now we've got these buckets of candy, and it's just calling my name, then, you know, you got to find something that works. Ask your spouse to put it where you can't reach it or to put it where you don't know where it is or, you know, find something, but don't set yourself up for failure. Um, okay, so that's Halloween. And then let's move on to mindless snacking. I think that just kind of follows on the trails of having all of that candy in our house. <clears throat> Here are some tips that I can give you that have worked for me <clears throat> in the snacking department. Let me get a drink real quick. <clears throat> Boy, that late night's getting to me. Okay, I make sure I have healthy snacks around and accessible. I make sure that it's um, snacks that are portion controlled. If they don't come that way, when you get home from the store, get some baggies out, divide them up, mark the bags, and put them aside. Um, I don't ever let myself sit down with a box or a bag of food because mindless snacking will get you every single time. So if I go in the kitchen to get something to snack on while I'm watching TV, 
I'm not bringing a bag or a box back to the couch with me. I'm bringing the exact portion of food that I'm gonna let myself have and that's it. The next thing I do is before it goes in my mouth, I track that portion. Um, I write it down or I put it in my tracker and, and that's all I let myself have is the amount that I tracked. Tell yourself after your meal, the kitchen is closed. We don't go in the kitchen just to browse. We don't go in the kitchen to graze. Don't ever eat your snacks in the kitchen um, because then it's too easy to reach for more. If you're gonna have a snack, go in there, get it, portion it, track it, and leave the kitchen and turn the light out. That's it. Um, it's it can't be a, an all night buffet or or you'll you'll be in trouble. Um, Somebody wrote this the other day, and I thought it was a really good idea. She said when she starts getting the munchies, she um, goes and polishes her fingernails so they're wet. You can't dip your wet fingernails into a bag of popcorn or, you know, something like that. So if, if that works for you, then keep some, some pretty nail polish or some clear nail polish around and, and you know, get those nails wet. Um, here's what I do. <clears throat> And this is my other tip for you. Um, travel size mouthwash. You can get them all the time. If you go to hotels frequently, a lot of times they have them there as part of your freebies. Take them. If not, you can get them in the travel section of the store and they're cheap. Keep one in your, um, uh, in your office. Keep one in your kitchen. Keep one in your purse. Keep one everywhere you need one within reach, and when you start getting the munchies, take a swig. Um, nothing tastes good after mouthwash. Chocolate tastes terrible. You're not gonna want that candy, um, and by the time the taste of the mouthwash wears off, hopefully the urge to splurge has died, and you've moved on. Um, when you are catching yourself mindlessly snacking, we talked about this a week or so ago, but, you know, ask yourself, what emotion am I feeling? Am I really hungry? If you're hungry, wait a few minutes, and if you're still hungry, then let yourself have something to eat. But if it's boredom, get up and do something. Go for a walk or, you know, um work on a puzzle or read a book or um, I go in my sewing room. Find what works for you, but only eat when you're hungry. And um, then the snacking becomes less of an issue. Um, some people brush their teeth. I, if I, you know, when I'm home and, I'm, and I can get to my bathroom, I'll brush my teeth, but I keep the mouthwash in my purse and on my desk at work because um, you know, sometimes brushing my teeth just isn't an option. So uh, just taking a real short little swig of that um, mouthwash has the same effect. It's just getting the taste in your mouth so that you don't want to nibble on um, chocolate. And so uh, you might you might try that. See if that works for you. It's just some little some little tips that you know kind of have helped me along the way. Um, okay, let's talk about. Um, how to be mentally strong. I saw this on Facebook and I kind of modified it a little bit, but these are just some, some don'ts for you to keep in mind. It's a mental game. Overcoming the snacking and overcoming the eating the Halloween candy and overcoming the mindless eating and those kind of things are all a mental game. So um, here are eight don'ts that may help you with that. One is don't fear alone time. Um, that's when a lot of people get in trouble and that's when they start, you know, binge eating when they're alone. Get to the point where you're not afraid to be alone. Just give yourself something else to do and don't let food be how you medicate yourself. If you're not hungry, if, if hunger isn't the problem, then food isn't the solution. So don't fear being alone. Don't dwell on the past. What you did yesterday is done. You can't go back and change it. You can't erase it, so stop dwelling on it. Just learn from it and move on. Um, don't expect immediate results. They're not going to happen. You may see a loss on the scale today. Tomorrow may be a different story, but you're not gonna eat one healthy meal and wake up skinny. It's just not gonna happen. Didn't happen for anybody else and it won't happen for you. So don't put that, um, that pressure on yourself. 
Don't waste time feeling sorry for yourself. Goes back to, to yesterday. If you messed up, you messed up. It's life, we all do it. Just move on. Don't put that kind of pressure on you. Don't waste your time on things you can't control. You can't control what your spouse or your boyfriend or your grandchildren um, eat. That's their choice, it's their body. So all you can do is take care of you. You can offer healthy things for them, but they control what goes in their mouth. So stop stressing yourself out about what they eat. You can't shy away from responsibility. I said this the other day, and it's kind of um, tough love, but sometimes we just have to tell ourselves no. And sometimes we have to be adult enough to listen. Um, can you have that, that Snickers bar? Sure you can. Should you have it? Nope. So sometimes I have to say, Pam, you're not eating that. And then Pam has to listen and say, okay, you're right, I'm not gonna eat it. So um, don't shy away from responsibility. Uh, don't give up after a failure. There is no starting over. We've all said, I've started over a million times. There really isn't starting over because if you truly start over, um, you're erasing all of the good that you did and all of the knowledge that you learned thus far on the journey. So instead of looking at it as starting over, um, we're just adjusting and continuing on. Um, if you're going down the highway and you take an exit off of the highway to eat or get gas or something, if you start it over every time, you're gonna go back to the beginning of your journey and you're not ever gonna get there. But if you get back on the highway adjust your, your course and keep moving on, eventually you're gonna reach your destination. So don't give up if you had a bad day. Just learn from it and keep going. Don't fear calculated risk. Sometimes eating a few extra points might be worth the risk. If you feel like you're kinda of stuck in a plateau or in a rut, Try something different. It may not work. You may see a slight gain, but that's okay. You tried and you learned. Um, I tried some food on vacation that uh, was way outside of my comfort zone. One of them I really liked. The other one I didn't, but I wouldn't have known if I hadn't tried. So give yourself permission every now and then to take a calculated risk. Maybe try using a couple of your weekly points. Um, maybe try, um, you know, an, an exercise that you're not sure you can do. Uh, go in the gym. So what if somebody looks at you? Um, odds are they're not looking at you. Odds are they're just trying to catch their breath or um, decide what they're gonna do next. Or they may even be looking around just hoping that they'll see somebody smile at them or give them a thumbs up. Everybody needs encouragement. So don't fear taking those risks. Don't start over. We don't start over. Take that out of your vocabulary. There is no starting over. It's life. We just keep moving forward. We learn from our mistakes. We adjust our sales and we move on down the road. Um, next week, we're gonna talk about change. That's been a big subject on the board lately, and um, so we're going to talk about it next week. We're not going to talk about it on the board this week. Um, there's been a lot of speculation. There's been a lot of guessing. There's been a lot of misinformation, and um, so we're not going to talk about change on the board this week, so don't post it because it's going to get deleted. Um, we're not going to promote a lot of gossip and I think this is and my best friends, neighbors, mothers, aunt said that kind of thing doesn't serve us any good and so we're not gonna do it. Um, but next week on Monday, we will talk about change. Um, okay, let me look at some of your comments and see what, what y'all are having to say. Julian Michael says, if you get a flat tire, you don't get out of the car and slash the other three. Love that one. Um, Let's see, Kathy says, if you broke one egg, you wouldn't smash the other 11. If you tripped on one step, you wouldn't hurl yourself, hurl yourself down the flight of stairs. Yeah, it's, it's just the journey. Um, don't, don't let yourself get derailed so easily. It's so, and, and I've done it a million times. I'm not telling you something I haven't done. It's so easy to say, okay, it's Monday, I messed up. 
had a bad day, so I'll wait and start over next Monday because nobody starts a diet on Tuesday, right? So what do you do? It's Monday, I've messed up, I'm gonna start over next Monday, so between Tuesday and Sunday, I just had an all out gorge fest and ate everything bad inside because you know I needed to get it out of the house and I got to get it out of my system, and um, I'm going to be good starting Monday, so I might as well have all those things now that I'm not going to let myself have after Monday. We've all said those, and we all know that it's not true. We're not going to do it. So if you have a bad Monday, big deal. You had a bad Monday. You just keep going. You're one meal away from getting right back on track and doing what you know you're supposed to be doing. So track it, own it, and move on. It's not the end of the world. This is a life journey. It's not a diet. Diets have an ending date. We don't end on Weight Watchers. We just keep on living. And um, so I, I watched the, the twin sisters that I've told you before. I love to follow them on YouTube. And if you haven't, I strongly encourage you to go to YouTube and search for the skinny on weight loss or skinny on Weight Watchers. Somebody help me. Is it the skinny on Weight Watchers or the skinny on weight loss? I can't remember. I know it's the skinny. Um, I think they're from Ohio, maybe Cincinnati or something. Um, <clears throat> twin sisters and um, go back to the beginning of their videos and watch them from the beginning. They have been doing Weight Watchers for over three years. Three years. And one of them just reached her goal this week. And the other one I think is just maybe 10 or 12 pounds from goal. Um, three years they've been doing this and how many times would you or I have quit and started over and given up in those three years they went on vacations they've had celebrations they've had many many weeks of gains they've had many weeks of uh, it's the skinny on weight loss thank you Betty they've had many weeks of plateaus but they didn't give up they just kept going and they lived it and they owned it. And now they're reaping the benefit of that. And you can too. You just can't give up. Um, own it and forgive yourself. Get right back on track, Barbara. That's, that's exactly what we have to do. Um, you're human. You're going to have days that you eat too much. You're going to have uh, family celebrations where you went into it saying, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, and you did. We all do. We're human. So you know, it doesn't make you a bad person. It doesn't make you a failure. It doesn't make you anything except just like the rest of us. So just give yourself permission to be human. Give yourself permission to live. Um, I watched the video this weekend where um, the twin told us that she reached her goal. And I, and I was interested, like I told you yes, uh, last week, I've never seen anybody reach goal and say, yeah, I did, but I'm really upset that I didn't do it sooner. I'm really upset that it took me this long to get there. I've never heard anybody say that. I've only heard people say, I did it. I'm so proud of me because I did it. Nobody even talks about how long it took them to do it. It doesn't matter at that point. At that point, you've just reached that, uh, that gold star from Weight Watchers that you've been working so hard and so long and you just don't even care. It's kind of like childbirth. I've never heard a mother give birth to a child and the day after talk about the nine months of morning sickness and the swollen ankles and the aching back and the pain in our legs and how it just took too long to get that baby here. They don't even talk about the pain of childbirth the day after. Somehow we forget about all of the pain along the way because we've reaped the benefit and the prize that we were working so hard to birth. You're birthing a new you and there's going to be pain along the way. There's gonna be swollen ankles. There's gonna be days that you just are miserable but you just keep going. And when you reach that day that Weight Watchers hands you that gold star, I promise you all of the pain, all of the plateaus, all of the gains, all of the meals that you said no to are not going to matter. They just won't. I promise you it's worth it. 
Um, it is the Skinny on Weight Loss on YouTube. Um, Kim and Kelly, and I know they're on Connect, but I, I'm not a Connect uh, person, so I don't know what their names are on Connect. But um, they don't do Facebook. At least I don't believe they do. Um, but um, th those videos are so motivating, and they also give you a, a lot of good recipes and food product finds along the way. So um, I've been at Goal for, for several um uh, eight months now, seven months, about seven months, and I still watch them every week because they keep me motivated, and I just enjoy, uh, I enjoy watching other people reach their their journey, uh, their goal, and I, I just love it. Deb O'Leary says it took her six years. Doesn't matter how long it takes, does it, Deb? Doesn't matter. It's worth it. Um, holiday recipe exchange, Christmas or Thanksgiving, Carrie, whichever one you want to do. Um, some people don't celebrate Christmas, and I, and I understand that. So if you're more comfortable sending a Thanksgiving card, then by all means do that. But uh, just, and it doesn't even have to be a holiday card. Just send them a card with an encouraging note. Um, there's going to be temptation of apple pie. There absolutely is, and there's nothing wrong with eating a little bit of apple pie. Um, you just have to own it. Except going in, uh, here's what my plan is for Thanksgiving Day. And, and, and you do whatever works for you, but my plan for Thanksgiving Day is uh, we have our children over for dinner on Thanksgiving night. They always have lunch with their in-laws, and so they come to our house for dinner. So I get up Thanksgiving morning, and I go for a really long walk. My husband goes with me, and so I get some extra fit points. Some people go do a turkey run, and that's great, but I have a lot of cooking to do, so I don't get too far from the house, but I do go for a long walk. Um, I eat incredibly low-point food Thanksgiving Day all the way up until our meal, so I'm saving all of my points that I can. Um, I don't use any of my weekly points leading up to that day, and then I let myself have a tablespoonful of everything that I want to taste except dressing and I only have dressing once a year and I'm not limiting it I'm gonna eat my dressing so I limit everything else I have turkey and I only eat the white meat because I don't like dark meat and the, the white meat is lower points so um, I, I, I save my points for the dressing because that's the important one to me but I let myself have a tablespoon of the other things. And then with the desserts, um, I don't eat a slice of every pie that's there. I eat a bite of each of the pies or each of the desserts, and, and that's all I need. I just want a taste of it, and then I go brush my teeth. As soon as the meal is over, I go brush my teeth, and then I sit down with my coffee and my grandkids and the newspaper ads, and I'm done. I'm out of the kitchen. So um, that's just what works for me. But but the thing is, I go into it with a plan. I don't go into it, um, you know, just and let it be a free-for-all. So you just have to figure out what works for you. Uh, crustless pumpkin pie is an excellent choice. I love it, and I have that, you know, during the year when it's not even Thanksgiving because it's so good. Um, those are just some suggestions. I hope they help you. Um, we are going to modify some Thanksgiving recipes. The moderators are working on it. If you want to contribute to that, start gathering some mod modified Weight Watcher friendly Thanksgiving recipes. And we are going to post those on um, Thursday before Thanksgiving. So it will be the 16th, November 16th. We're going to declare that day uh, our Thanksgiving recipe exchange day. So start gathering yours. Try to make sure it's a recipe that you've tried and you know is good, but by all means, only post it with the smart point value, not points plus smart points. I get that some of you are doing points plus and that's great if that's what you wanna do, but the majority of the people are doing smart points. So if you have a points plus recipe, um, ask somebody to help you figure out what the smart points value of it is. And we'll do that. 
Um, I think that's it. I hope that you all have a wonderful day. I hope you have a successful week. Um, be kind to yourself, be kind to someone else, and be supportive on the board. And uh, again, I, I know I say the board because it's a message board to me. It's our Facebook group. If you're watching on YouTube and you're not a member of our Facebook group, please go to Facebook and search Weight Watchers Over 50 and join us. We would love to have you on board with us as we um, go down this journey to maintain and achieve our weight loss goals. And I think that's it. I hope you have a wonderful week and I will see you on the board. Bye.